Bonjour, Kinemagi and Nene Ireland and Dishnikas, and welcome to our next episode in the My Math Television Network. Today's lesson from Chapter 3, Relate Division to Multiplication. Chapter 3 will be what strategies can be used to divide whole numbers. If you recall in chapter two, it was about multiplying whole numbers. Numbers. Well, now we're gonna do the inverse or opposite and worry about dividing those whole numbers. So exploring, how do you determine what numbers are in a fact family? And in a long story short, this is where the commutative property of multiplication is really helpful. I'm gonna grab an annotation tool here. What the text. So let's say that I like football. So I'm gonna use some football numbers, seven times three. And what does seven times three equal? 21. Unit of property of multiplication also tells me that I can go three times seven to get 21. So seven rows of three or three rows of seven are gonna both give me 21. Notice the product did not change even though I changed the order of factors. So then again, that is the commutative property of multiplication. But there's more to the fact family. If I can multiply them, I can divide them. So when I'm doing that, I start with 21 and I'm gonna use this for divide. This is one of several different ways you can write it. And based on what I'm using right now for a device, it's the easiest way. So what is 21 divided by seven? Three. All right, so if I put I took my 21 pieces and I put them in seven rows, there'd be three in each row. But I can also we got a little issue here. Let's tie that again real fast here. Three times seven was 21, seven times three was 21, 21 divided by seven was three, 21 divided by three, you guessed it, seven. That is a fact family. You can see that we changed the orders around in the multiplication, we kept the same product. In division, uh, we had to start with the big piece, the 21, the, t the whole, and divide it up. And if I divide it into seven rows, I got three in each row. If I divide it into three rows, I get seven in each row. So these four are a fact family. When you get down to quiz time, and I ask you to write the fact family for a set of three numbers, you need to include all four rows. Let's clear it and go to the next screen. A matching game uses 24 cards. Describe how you would arrange the cards on a table so there are an equal number of cards in each row. What numbers would be in the fact family that describes your arrangement? And you, if you have counters available you are, or other tools, you can use those as manipulatives to model the cards. I would like to point out that there are multiple answers to this. And let's see if they give us an answer here. So one sample was four rows of six. So they gave us a number of four, six, and 24, the original number here. There are others. We could have used three rows of eight cards, which would still give us a fact family of three, eight, and 24. Could have done two rows of 12, so two, 12, and 24. Uh, so there are multiple ways to get to 24. And if you're in your head, if I ask this problem, I would accept all answers that were 
going to give us the correct factors to get us a product of 24. So the numbers here, this fact family would be 4624. Oh, too far. Describe a situation that a fact uses a fact family to divide 21 items. So think about one for just a second, and I'll show us what was in the text here. Samantha made 21 bracelets, and she wanted to give an equal number to seven friends. Seven times three is 21, so she gave each friend three bracelets. Although in reality, I starting with 21, and I would have done 21 divided by seven to find the three. But again, they are in the same fact family. All right, so you should be in your book now on lesson one, Math in My World example, basic. Keep in mind, my screen will not always look exactly like your screen, but I will do the best I can. Example basic. Cheryl is helping to put away 18 basketballs after practice. She places them on a rack that has three shelves. How many basketballs can she put on each shelf? I could use a fact family because I could say, okay, three times what is 18? Well, I know that 18 divided by three is six. Let me get my annotation tools here. And you should fill this in as we go. So it's three times six was 18. That also means that the commutative property applies. So I can go three, six times three is 18. Three times six is 18, six times three. Now we're gonna divide. Well, how many times did six go into 18? You can see the answer right there. And at this point, if you're catching the pattern, the answer should come out to you pretty easily. How many times does three go into 18? That's a six. I now have the fat family for three, six, and 18. And I could use these fat families to help me solve problems. Let's go ahead and clear. And as always, we'll see the uh, answer. So if 18 divided by three equals six, sure, I could put six basketballs on each shelf. If at any point I move too fast and you need to pause the video to finish writing on a page, please go ahead and do such. I could now draw them on here. And I'll be honest with you, if you draw circles, good enough. I don't need to see the, the NBA logo on it or the Wilson logo. And here I see a picture. There were three shelves, basic, niche, and sway. There's uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. So six across the top. So six, 12, 18. So we have the right one. Three times six is 18. There's your six. I can count all the basketballs. We're good to go. We do have some highlighted words here. An equation is a number sentence that contains an equal sign. So three times six equals 18 is an equation. You can use related facts to help find the unknown or missing value. So if I said something like three times N equals 18, I could, that unknown is the N. I can use a variable or letter to represent the unknown number. And that's what I did with the idea of three times N equals 18, or even six times N equals 18. As we progress through fifth grade and move on to sixth grade, you will start seeing the presence of more and more variables and you should get comfortable with them because by the time you get to seventh and eighth grade math and especially into high school, you'll use them quite frequently. But they're, they shouldn't be too scary. All right, let's look at example niche. Let's start by reading the problem and then I'll slide it down just a hair. Example niche. Ellie is creating gift bags for her party gifts. Yes, she wants to divide 56 pencils equally among the seven gift bags. How many pencils will go in each bag? Let P represent the number of pencils in each bag. So something divided by something is equals P. And I know that in this textbook, they sometimes call this algebra. I don't, um, because really it's no different than solving a problem. So I'm gonna get my annotation tool Get the text here and 
we started out with 56. That's what we're dividing up. So I want to write that there. And it's going to go into seven gift bags. So now I have the problem. 56 divided by seven, there's my unknown P. So let's think, what number times seven is 56? And if you're really quick on it, that's great. Um, if this is a struggle for you, you may use a multiplication chart. It might help you, help you out while you're still working on the memorization of these math facts. So 56 divided by seven is eight. Since P equals eight, Ellie will put eight pencils in each bag. Go ahead and make sure that's filled in. And you could probably get your fact family pretty simple now. Seven, eight, 56. So I can go eight times seven is 56. Seven times eight is 56. 56 divided by eight is seven. 56 divided by seven is eight. Let me go ahead and clear the drawings. See the answer key. Let's do one together. Complete the fact family for eight, nine, and 72. I like to put my big number right on the top. I'm gonna to use my annotation tool. Get the text box actually. And I have an eight and a nine. So now I just have to fill in blanks essentially. Eight times nine is 72. It's the only number missing. Because that's how numbers have to be here. Nine and eight is 72. Now, when you do the division ones, the big number goes first. 72 divided by eight is nine. 72 divided by nine is eight. So if you're catching the patterns on these, it starts to get pretty easy to fill these in because you're only using three numbers and they're giving you two of them. Go ahead and fill that in. And then we'll move on here in a second to some practice for you. Actually, before I send you out, let's look at a couple more. 48 divided by what equals six? So you want to stop and think about your multiplication fact. And um, I'm going to get the annotation tool here. How many times does six go into 48? If you have it memorized, you know it already. But if not, feel free to go ahead and check a multiplication chart or solve it in another way. And that's an eight. So eight times six is 48. Over here, how many times does five go into 40? And you can check your multiplication chart, you get an eight and five times eight is 40. So those will help you out. Let me go ahead and clear these. the answer. How could I use multiplication to find 21 divided by seven? Well, I could, I could do repeated addition. I could stop and say, well, how many times does seven go into 21? Seven, 14, 21. Oh, that's three. So let's use three. So now let's practice. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You'll see there are four lines there. I want you to write the four fact families. Those will be two multiplication and two division. It is important that you count the individuals. That's how you're gonna find your big number. And on number five, you wanna count the individual blocks, not just this as a whole one. So for each segment, I'll ask you to pause the video, um, do it, write it down, and then come back and check your work. You may pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see what we got for answers. There were 15 of them in, in three columns of five or five rows of three. Now we have the, the inverse operation is the division. So five times three is 15, 15 divided by three is five. Three times five is 15, 15 divided by five is three. Over here we have eight times two is 16 and two times eight is 16 and then the inverse operations. Try some more. And this one, they're not gonna give you the visual. They want you to go ahead and write the 
fact families. Again, I'll ask you to pause the video in a moment, write down the fact families for all three sets of numbers, and then unpause the video to check your work. You may pause the video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. And you can check your numbers against it. In number six, you needed four, not, four times nine is 36, nine times four is 36. 36 divided by four is nine, and 36 divided by nine is four. Each of these equations have the same three numbers. Over on number seven, we had five times seven is 35, and seven times five is 35. 35 divided by five is seven, 35 divided by seven is five. We also have eight number, uh, number eight, three times eight is 24, and eight times three is 24. And then 24 divided by three is eight, 24 divided by eight is three. Trust that you're going pretty well. Just remember, same three numbers. All right, so on this one's a little tougher. You're gonna take you a little, another moment, but you're really still doing the fact families. It's just that they've written out a couple of that, good chunk of it, and you don't have to have all four. You only need two on each. So go ahead and pause the video and we'll see how you did. Go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Well, six, eight times eight is 64. So eight goes in there. Nine goes into 45, five times that goes in there. Nine times nine is 81. That works. 32 is four groups of eight. That works. 40 is five groups of eight. And then 14, seven times nine is 63. Hopefully you're finding that one pretty well. Now they call this algebra, but it's really just fine. This one's a little more algebraic, but don't let that frighten you. You're still just doing a fact family. You're gonna find out how many times does two go into 12? How many times does eight go into 24? How many times does nine go into 72? So don't let the word algebra stress you out and force you to feel stuck. So go ahead and solve these three problems. You may pause the video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Two goes into 12, six times. So, and once I plug this six into there, two times six is 12. Y is three, eight times three is 24, correct? Nine times eight is 72. So these variables just really are meant to be plug in the number there and those number sentences will work or those equations will work. All right, so the next three, and then we'll send you off to your homework. Use the information below. Orange blossoms have five petals and are some of the most fragrant flowers. All right, so how many petals would be in a group of seven flowers? So what times what? Go ahead and pause the video. Welcome back, let's see how you did. 35, five times seven, seven flowers or seven blossoms, five petals on each. Next one, five, how many petals would there be in a group of 11 flowers? Write an equation to find the unknown and then find it. So you want the equation. Go ahead and pause the video and see you on the other side. You may pause now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Five times 11 is P, P equals 55, 55 petals. Quite often people will use the first letter of what they're trying to find as their variable. It's not required. If you had said five times 11 equals D, I would have accepted that just fine. I do discourage you from using X, L, O, or I as being your and Z for being your variables. And the reason for that is, or even S, is you will sometimes mistake them for actual numbers. N's a really popular one, M's a popular one, C or D is a popular one. Um, I also wouldn't use T because it could look like an addition symbol. All right, so let's go to the next one. A group of F flowers has 40 petals in all. 
Write an equation and find the unknown. So you're doing the exact same thing. Go ahead and pause the video. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So F equals, or is F? And F equals 8. So there's 8 flowers. At this point, I'm going to dismiss you to begin the homework. You may complete the homework in the paper packet. It just needs to be returned to me during our Wednesday drop off. Or if you're in group B, you should drop it off to me when you come back on Thursday. You may also choose to complete the assignment within the Google Classroom digitally, and I, I will accept either way. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to me during office hours at two o'clock. Uh, visit us in the live stream or send me an email at mireland at sidechipschool.net. Hope you all have a mental gigigat. Mama P.